Almost like the flashpoint, where it starts, one of the key matrix lines that will help shatter this status centralized system. Well, hello there. It is I, Jay-Z, coming to you on Wednesday, March 21st, I believe. It, today is the first day of spring. Well, it's felt like spring for about a month in St. Louis, another 80 plus degree day in March. Uh, I love this weather, but I just don't like it in March. Uh, my allergies should not already be bothering me, and it's really playing a havoc with people's respiratory systems and their uh, sinus uh, cavities. So I, I see a lot of people sick, out of work. I'm hoping, I'm praying to God that we get one last freeze to destroy all this pollen, possibly kill off the mosquitoes, give us a nice little break before, uh, so we can actually appreciate spring. We never had a winter. I don't know how you're supposed to appreciate spring if you never have a winter. Uh, I, for one, enjoy four seasons. It makes them all uh, pretty equally amazing. Um, thank you for joining me here on Flashpoint Radio. I want to remind everyone to follow me on Twitter at Flashpoint Radio, Facebook.com slash Flashpoint Radio. Click subscribe above to stay up to date. Hit like and reshare this with your friends. This is information that you should not be embarrassed to give to your friends and family. This is all based on, on news articles. I, I'm giving references for everything I talk about. Uh, send this out to the people you, that aren't listening, that aren't awake yet. Maybe they'll start to, to do their own research. Maybe they will start to awaken or at least have it in their mind that they were told. Uh, the one main thing we have to do with those that uh, are not receptive is at least tell them. That way when it happens, when something happens, a natural disaster, martial law, uh, insurrection, mar you know, the collapse of the economy, at least people will have heard it and they will have it in the back of their mind and it will prepare them mentally, because mentally, mental preparedness is probably number one on the list before you even get to the physical and uh, survival preparedness. But we are going to get right into it. I am going to address an issue that people have been asking me to cover. Uh, the NDRA, uh, what is it? Not the NDAA, it's the National Defense Resource Authorization executive order that Obama signed on Friday going into the weekend to hide it from the media. Why do you have to hide it from the media and release it on a Friday, Barack Obama? All of the mainstream media won't cover it anyways. So why not just release it on a Monday? Because they're not going to cover it. They're just not. So quit trying to play this game like they used to play when we had a media that actually did their job and was the fourth branch of government and was instituted to keep government honest. Uh, you have all of the media in your pockets, save for alternative media like myself and, and the tip of the spear, Alex Jones and World, World Net Daily and, and a, a lot of other resources on the internet. But uh, we're going to cover that. First, I though, I wanted to give a quick uh, period in cap to my court case on Monday. If you didn't hear from yesterday's show, uh, my case was dismissed. I'll give you the quick, hopefully three minute rundown. I get to court, I'm suited up. Uh, looking professional. I don't want them to uh, have, you know, any preconceived notions about me. So I go to court. I sit for about an hour and a half before they call my name. Uh, and I read my Bible and I prayed the entire time. I was, uh, I was praying. I was reading my Bible. People saw me. Uh, and I was praying to God for uh, protection from false accusers and from people passing false judgment on me people that did not have the right to judge me. I, I don't believe they had the right to judge me, and I prayed to God to protect me and to deliver me from my accusers. Well, when I got up to the judge's table, they, he, the judge said, well, this will be an easy one. This is a traffic violation, gone to trial. Um, they didn't swear me in. Uh, they basically you know, said, you're going to pay this, and I said, no, I'm not going to pay this, and I gave them the statute, or I gave them the copy of the city charter stating that they can't charge me with something that doesn't have a code ordinance in their city charter. Uh, the judge looked at that, looked at the prosecutor. The prosecutor said, well, I can just amend the charge to a derelict vehicle because there's no expired state tags uh, statute on the books in Maplewood. He said, I can just amend it to a derelict vehicle. I do not have a derelict vehicle. It was a 2005 Scion TC in very good shape. I got very good money for, for it when I sold it. So it was not a derelict vehicle. So I looked at the prosecutor and I said, oh, so you can just change it. 
So you can do anything. And these are words that I said. I'm not paraphrasing or making the sound more than it is. This is what I said to the judge and the prosecutor. I said, so you can just change things. I said, you can do anything. You can just change the law, change the charge so it will stick. And I looked at them both and I said, where do your rights end? And they didn't answer that. Obviously, they, they continued to talk. And then, um, you know, I brought up the fact that this ticket was written at 6.30 on a Sunday morning. And I said, the fact of the matter and the problem I have is that on 6.30 on a Sunday morning, our police officers in this city that are paid for by our tax dollars are driving around ticketing parked cars that are legally parked otherwise than an expired state tag. Not a Maplewood tag, but a state tag. No warning, no nothing. You just put a ticket and say, pay this $10. Well, they just assumed I would pay the $10 along with all the other sheep and drones that walk around and will just pay these fines without even questioning them. People, wake up. You have to flood the courts with these stupid cases so they will stop charging you with stupid cases to generate revenue. Now, the best part about it is I said jury trial because they weren't going to fold. They weren't going to dismiss the case, even though I brought up the fact that the government employee, the police officer, no longer worked for the city. They were not going to dismiss the case because the judge asked me if I was parked in the street and if my tags were expired, and I told him yes. I wasn't under oath. I didn't have to lie to him, or I didn't have to tell him the truth, but I did. But he didn't make me uh, swear to oath, so it couldn't hold up in court. So they said, no, we'll go to a jury trial, sent me outside where there were no other citizens, and decided to send the prosecutor out in private in front of two police officers, a city clerk and himself, to tell me the case was dismissed. Why? Because they didn't want to show everyone else in that courtroom that they were wrong and that I won. That they don't win every case. That you can win. So I'm telling you, parking tickets, speeding tickets, red light cameras, fight them. Let them lapse, let them bring you to court, and make those police officers answer for what they're writing. Because ultimately it's them that are writing the tickets. Enough of that. We're going to get into this Obama signing order, this executive order that he signed. I've got tons of uh, articles linked below. Uh, a lot of them from Infowars.com. I suggest you read them. I'm going to give my opinion, but first we're going to look directly at the uh, executive order. Policy, the United States must have an industrial and technological base capable of meeting national defense requirements and capable of contributing to the technological superiority of its national defense equipment in peace times and in times of national emergency. Neither did they say war. These executive orders and the, the excuses, these executive orders have been on the books for years. Uh, president Eisenhower put them on the books in 1950 and they've been updated by almost every president since then. Well, that's fine. President Eisenhower put them on the books in case of a nuclear attack on Washington, wherein the entire government was decimated by a nuclear explosion. So it was a time of war, an act of war. This was a con continuity of government in times of war. Well, President Obama has his, his uh, executive order say, in peace times and in times of national emergency. That's pretty vague. Well, A, peacetime is all the time because we don't de declare war correctly with a declaration from Congress anymore. So we're always, I guess, in peacetime. And national emergency, what's a national emergency? The lights go out in a blackout in New York City. Uh, a flood in Missouri, an earthquake in Arizona, mudslides in, in uh, California. Are those, uh, those are all you know, national emergencies. They declare a national emergency at almost every loss of life that's from uh, Mother Nature in this country. The best part about this, and you have to read the, in the entire executive order, I've got the link below, um, is basically it goes through saying that the government can confiscate and can take over all businesses. Uh, agriculture is the main one that they focus on, but agriculture, manufacturing, defense, uh, stockpiles, state stockpiles, county stockpiles, the federal government can take over those. And they say in times of emergency. Well, what does that mean? Well, it means that they've already given themselves the, uh, the authority that they own it. So they say, all we have to do is say it's a time of emergency and we take it. So everyone's saying, well, this doesn't say anything about martial law or confiscating resources or industries, what are you talking about? It says in state of emergency or in peacetime, the government, when they say it's deemed necessary, can, can take over and take over business, can take land and use it for their own, for their own ways. Um, to me, that sounds like taking it over. Are they physically doing it right now? No, but this is how government works. They put it on paper, then you forget about it, and then they come back and say, see, we passed this. You didn't say anything about this. We passed this. So you're going to have to give me your farm. I'm going to need your wheat 
because my troops need it or the UN troops that are working in the United States need it or the people in New York need it. This is crazy, people. This is executive order. It creates martial law. Um, and the best part about this is, uh, in my opinion, the end of this order, which states, I will read it directly, um, this order is not intended to and does not create any right or benefit, substantive or procedural, enforceable at law or in equity by any party against the United States, its departments, agencies, or entities, its officers, employees, or agents, or any other person. Do you understand that? This order does not give you, it says the government can take your stuff, but it specifically states in the last line, right before Barack Obama's name, that you cannot hold them responsible in a court of law at all. Do you get that? They can take your stuff and you can't sue them. Why? Because the president says so. Because the executive branch says so. Because our rulers say so. Because you're a serf. And guess what a serf is? A serf works on owned land. And if they want you off that land, they'll get rid of you because you're a serf and you don't own them. What do you think property taxes are? Do you think you ever own your property when you have to pay property taxes? How is that? If you don't pay your property taxes, they'll come with a SWAT team and kick you off your land. So where's the right to property? Where's the right to own property in this country? There is none. Now, I know that property taxes are state, state regulation, regulated by the state, but you're letting yourself live, into the, live in state tyranny just as much as national tyranny. Um, this is crazy. This is just another case of the government stating, you will do what we say no matter what. Um, so don't let them fool you and make you think that this is just a rehashing of something and it's harmless. It's not harmless. Read all of these articles below and make your own decision. Read the whole executive order yourself and make your own decision. Because guess what? When was the last time we've had war in this country? The War of 1812. Well, uh, well I'm sorry, from a foreign entity. The Civil War. But other than that, from foreign invaders, the War of 1812. Okay? When was the last time we've had a declared war? The Korean War, but not even. That was a conflict. World War II. So give me this. You know, World War II, they did all this stuff, but that was because Congress declared war. They haven't declared any of these wars. These are just wars declared by the executive branch. So we live under a dictatorship. We already live under martial law. You, can ne you cannot go anywhere you want. You cannot get information on the government because of things like uh, sovereign immunity and qualified immunity. Um, the government has tons of laws and tons of regulations put in place to protect them from, namely, you. They want to protect themselves from you. Well, what happens in a time of war or national emergency? Where's the executive order protecting liberty, protecting our individual rights, protecting the citizens? There is none. There is none. Our federal government passes laws to protect the federal government. And then we have no lawful recourse against the federal government. This is tyranny, people. This is real. This is happening. Check the links below. I'll check you next time. Jay-Z signing off saying God bless and keep your eyes to the sky.